Stephen Toriello Show. Building a platform of liberty for people in search of truth with a dash of hope and a life worth living. The Stephen Toriello Show. And you never know where Stephen may go. And now, here's Stephen. Trans activists called for, quote, day of vengeance before shooting of Christian school. What's up, podcast listeners? Welcome to the show. A This is going to be a hard show today. This is going to be a very, very tough show to do. We got, we're going to have to talk about this. I wasn't even going to talk about this. I was going to talk about the, the newly released January 6th footage. But after reading a lot of the comments from the left, and from transgender communities, I felt like we need to talk about this. This We can't just let these people dominate the narrative and dominate the language when these kinds of things happen because we're too afraid to talk about them. I feel so freaking bad for the parents of these kids, man. I cannot imagine what these parents are going through. I have two kids of my own. I have a son and I have a daughter, and I cannot imagine what these parents are going through. I cannot fathom what these parents are feeling right now. And it's just sad that these parents are going to have to wake up tomorrow morning and not have their child to take to school. And then they're going to have to wake up every day like that for the rest of their life. I'm sorry. I just can't imagine what they're going through. And listen, we really do need to give our, our thoughts and prayers to these, to these families and everybody involved. It is just, it's just so sad, man. The moment that this happened, the Democrats jumped. They leaped right on this. They do not let a crisis go to waste. You already had Democrats coming out, blaming Republicans, blaming guns, demanding something be done, demanding the assault weapons ban. And it's just so typical, man. It's We go through this every single time. It's so monotonous. Every time one of these shootings happen, it's the same conversation. So I'm going to give my opinion a little bit later on some possible remedies, I think. But ladies and gentlemen, I will hint to this. We need to stop doing what these people want. These people's ideas suck. They always suck and they always will suck. Maybe we should try doing it our way. We've tried these people's way for years and years and years. There's 3,000 laws on the books and it doesn't do anything. And these people have no clue what they're talking about. So I think it's our duty, it's our, it's our civic duty to step up and come up with some solutions for this. And before you come up with solutions, you have to figure out what the issue is. Democrats go right to the assault weapons. Democrats go right to guns because they're gun grabbers. That's what they want, folks. That's what they are. They want your guns. So of course, the first thing they're going to do is trying to figure out a way to weasel their way in to getting your guns. They want your guns. So for decades and decades, every time one of these shootings happen, the Democrats get a new law passed, or they get another executive order passed, or they just sit there and incrementalize and nibble and nibble and nibble, and it doesn't do anything. All it does is it just squeezes on the law-abiding gun owners. Their ideas that they come out with, their laws and their theories and their remedies Don't do anything but impact the law-abiding gun owners. And what did we do, folks? I'm a gun owner myself. I have guns. What did we do? Every time one of these shootings happen, it's the law-abiding gun owners that pay the price. It's the law-abiding gun owners that that are punished. So I I I think we should be done doing it these people's way. Enough with the laws. Enough with the executive orders. Enough with all this calling for assault weapons ban. I think it's time for us to do it our way. And I said this from the very beginning. More guns equals less crime. We need more guns in these schools. We need more resource officers in these schools. And do not tell me we cannot afford it. I don't even want to hear we can't afford it. When we're sending billions of dollars over to a nation to protect their nation, and we can't even put freaking resource officers in ours. I don't believe it. So. Don't tell me that we can't afford it. We absolutely can. The billions of billions of dollars we're sending over there is plenty enough money to get our schools to where they need to be to keep our kids safe. 
And just like this reference has been made all day today by other hosts, that we keep our money safer than we do our own children. And that is so sick, folks, but it's the truth. When you really think about it, it is sad that we can have armed officers inside banks keeping our money safe, but we can't have armed officers inside our schools keeping our kids safe. I know my kids' school have resource officers. They are armed, and they're bad mamma jammas. I shake their hand every time I see them, and I thank them for their service, and I thank them for keeping our kids safe. But you can't sit there and tell me you don't want more guns in the schools. When you've tried everything else, the only thing that they have not done was ban guns completely, was come and confiscate everybody's guns. And I promise you folks, that's not going to work either. Why? Because none of these ideas, none of the ideas that these people have work. They suck, and they always end up hurting people. And I guarantee you, if you give them an inch, they're going to take a mile, and you're never going to get your right back. If you surrender your Second Amendment rights to these people, you're never going to get it back. It doesn't work that way. They can take it in a day, but it's, it'll take years. It'll take decades to get it back. So that is obviously not the solution. These people are so dumb, but I want to, before I get into that, I know I kind of went off on a little rant. This is, it pisses me off so much when these people do this stuff, man. They, they politicize this. They do it, folks. They do it before. Like I said, before the identities were even given from the victims, the Democrats came out blaming Republicans and politicizing this to no end. So I have an article here. This is actually kind of concerning. And this, I think, folks, is a big underlying issue. When I talk about remedies, when I talk about figuring out what the problem is first so that we can come up with the solution, this I feel like is a big underlying issue. I got an article here from PJ Media, hat tip to Matt Margolis, uh, dated March 28th. It's titled, Trans Activists Call for Day of Vengeance Before Shooting of Christian School. That's kind of crazy if that's the case now. I will say right off the gate, we do not know what the motive was behind the shooting. There's a lot of details we don't know yet, and that's one of the reasons why I didn't come out yesterday and do a show on this. I wanted some more details before I commented on this, and we do know quite a bit, but there's still a lot we don't know. We don't know her motive, and yes, I said her. We don't know her motive, and we don't know what was in that manifesto. And we don't know what the target was. There was a second target. There was there was two targets. She did not go to the first one. And I'll I'll be talking about that in, in the, later in the episode. She didn't go to that one. And she went to the second one. And that's where the shooting happened. So there is a lot of details we don't know. But uh, we are basically, we're piecing this together with the details we do know. And I'm, I assure you, I believe we're going to be finding out more as the days go by. Um, but we know quite a bit. Okay, here we go with the article. On Monday, 28-year-old Audrey Elizabeth Hale, a biological woman who identified as a transgender, murdered six people, including three children, at the Covenant School, a private Christian grade school in Tennessee. This deadly attack was carried out the same week as a planned day of vengeance by transgender activists later this week. The website of the Trans Radical Activist Network declares, quote, like the Stonewall riots, the gays and lesbians were experiencing what the trans community is facing now. This cycle of hate needs to end. In fact, it must. Allies, siblings, we need you now more than ever. I was a radical revolutionist. I still am a revolutionist. I am glad I was in the Stonewall riot. I remember when someone threw a Molotov cocktail, I thought, my God, the revolution is here. The revolution is finally here. That was Sylvia Rivera, a comment she made on Twitter. Currently, there is no known connection between the shooter and the group. On Monday... Nashville Chief of Police John Drake was asked whether Hale, identifying as a transgender, played a role in her targeting the school. He would not confirm this, but indicated that it was a working theory and said it would be discussed at a later date. 
the primary Day of Vengeance event is scheduled for 11 a.m. on Saturday at the Supreme Court in D.C., with additional events planned for March 31st. LGBTQ activists specifically targeted Justice Brett Kavanaugh, who was previously the target of an assassination attempt by a far-left activist last year. Yeah, you guys remember that? And here it is, the right is supposed to be some kind of extremist group, is supposed to be some kind of domestic terrorist. When you have these people protesting at judges' homes, okay, you have you have these leftists intimidating judges, Supreme Court judges. Look at all the stuff that they have done just in the last 10 years that we've seen. And none of these people ever get in trouble. And these people aren't considered extremists. These people aren't considered terrorists. I mean, my God, there was there was one person that tried to kill Brett Kavanaugh. There was an assassination attempt. They got the guy with, with a gun, a knife, zip ties, and tape. And these people aren't considered domestic terrorists? Come on, man. The article continues, The group purports to seek revenge for what they term transgenocide, a conspiracy theory that claims that transgender people are systematically targeted with violence. However, an examination of FBI statistics by the Daily Wire shows no proof to corroborate this claim. In 2021, only two of the 271 recorded hate crimes against transgender individuals resulted in murder. These figures are substantially lower than those of other groups and insufficient to substantiate allegations of, quote, transgenocide. According to its website, the organization's national recruitment director is Bo Belodi, age 22. Belodi, a biological female who identifies as a male, was profiled by her alma mater, Virginia Commonwealth University, in December. She co-founded a statewide... <laughs> I, love, I love how this guy put she in big quotations. She co-founded a statewide activist collective for trans people and served as a campaign manager for a city council candidate, a field organizer for Planned Parenthood's political action committee, and a field organizer for Terry McAuliffe in his gubernatorial run. In addition, she was a fellow for Delaware Elizabeth Guzman and interned with former Delaware Joshua Cole before being promoted to a legislative aide for Cole. Belodi boasted of her efforts in helping to craft HB 145, which mandated the development of model transgender policies for public schools. The resulting guidelines encouraged schools to conceal the gender transition of children from their parents. This, ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to do an episode just specifically about this. I'm working on the prep work right now for this because when I do this episode, it's going to be very important that we get everything down. It's going to be a long episode, and it's going to be detailed, and I'm working on that right now. The stuff that's happening in our schools that the left say isn't happening, all this transgender ideology stuff that they're shoving into these schools, this is a huge problem, folks. And I think probably one of the underlying problems to the solution that we're trying to figure out with these mass shootings. I know it sounds crazy, and I know it sounds crazy to connect the two, but I'm telling you, there's something going on with the mental illness in these people. Not all these shooters are LGBTQ, but I'm telling you, I see this, this entire ideology that's infecting our kids, that's infecting our younger generations and our schools like a cancer. I see this being a bigger problem in the future if we do not get control of it. So I got some prep work I'm doing on that, and I, we're going to do that episode soon. Um, and I, I just find it just insane, not surprising, but I find it crazy that these people can sit there and tell you right to your face that none of this stuff is happening in the schools. None of this stuff is happening. You guys remember a year and a half ago how we were all conspiracy theorists when we were saying, yeah, you shouldn't be having these type the, the books that they were had in the public schools. There's no, These books don't exist in the schools. Well, now they admit they exist in the schools, and now it's just okay. And when we try and take them out of the public schools, Republicans are book burning and book banning. So, listen, a year ago they didn't exist. It was all a big conspiracy theory, and now we're the Republicans are banning books. Okay. Uh, let's finish the article. There is currently no indication that the planned Day of Vengeance has been canceled. However, in the wake of Monday shooting, various social media accounts connected to the group have been made private. 
this is a, uh, here's a tweet. The Antifa group organizing the Trans Day of Vengeance outside the Supreme Court has locked down its Twitter account following the deadly mass shooting on Christian School in Nashville by a trans shooter. So, this I see being a big problem. Now, we don't know the details yet. We don't know if it's connected to this shooting. We have no idea. We need to get that manifesto. And something I just read a little bit ago is that the FBI took the manifesto from the local police, which I hope they took a copy of that. I get that sometimes the FBI, they co-op with local police on certain things, but why would they want the manifesto? And I just hope that the cops took a copy, but I just find that weird. I don't know what it is. I'm just telling you that I seen it in a story I was reading, and I found it to be very weird that the FBI would just swoop in and take the manifesto specifically. So I don't know what that means. Maybe the maybe they wanted to study for analytical reasons. I have no idea, but that's what I read, and so I'm telling you. The thing is, is this group, this this transgender group, these people are violent, folks. I mean, if you read some of the comments that these people are making about the shooting, it's actually quite disgusting. I, I mean, not disgusting, it's evil. Some of the comments they're making are just straight evil. I mean, these are very, very violent, violent people. And I don't even know how they're not being, how they're not considered extremists, uh, domestic terrorists is beyond me. Because I'll tell you what, if if this is the kind of stuff that we're we're having to deal with from these transgender activists, this is insane. Not only do they not have remorse, but they almost cheered on the shooter. It was disgusting. I mean, it, some of the comments were just disgusting. I read, I read comments. I got so mad. I couldn't read any more comments. I wanted every single one that I read, I wanted to reply, but I just couldn't. I started typing and then I was just like, no, I can't, I cannot, I cannot fall into this trap. I have to, and I just got off and I came in and, and I did the show. But this stuff, folks, some of the comments these people were making were absolutely crazy. And it's because you have to understand these people are not coming from a normal mindset. There is something psychologically wrong with these people. Listen, if you are a dude and you think you're a woman, or if you're a woman and you think you're a man, there's already something wrong upstairs. I'm not saying gay. That's something totally different. I know plenty of gay people. My wife's uncle was gay. So I, I'm not, I have nothing against gay people. This is not gay people. This is something different. This transgender movement, this ideology, this contagion, this social contagion, this is something different. And this is something we're definitely going to have to get a hold of. It's going to bring problems for us in the future. I have a I have a statement here, and this is just to prove to you. This is just to give you a little insight into how these people think. I have a statement here from the the Trans Resistance Network. It's a media statement they made on March 27th about the school shooting in Nashville, Tennessee. So here we go. It's a little bit long, but not too long. You got it. You guys, you guys have to hear this. This is a must because now you're going to get an insight to how these people think. The Trans Resistance Network has been notified the shooter involved in today's church school shooting in Nashville. It was a person identifying as transgender, known from online profiles as Aiden or Aubrey Hale. He, him, in parentheses. <laughs> While it is not our policy to engage publicly with news media, we believe this moment calls for a thoughtful response from our collective. We point out that today's incident in Nashville, Tennessee, is not one tragedy, but two. The first tragedy today is the loss of life of three children and adults. We extend our deepest sympathies and heartfelt prayers to those families dealing with the loss of loved ones. There is nothing we can offer that will comfort the hurt or ease the sorrow. We mourn with you. The second and more complex tragedy is that of Aiden or Aubrey Hale, who felt he had no other effective way to be seen than to lash out by taking the life of others and by consequence himself. What is this all about, folks? Did I just, it's just mind blowing to me 
that they consider this a tragedy because the suspect, the shooter that just shot and murdered three innocent children, that's a tragedy? I mean, listen, folks, <laughs> this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is the stuff I'm talking about. Let me let me finish the rest of this statement that they made. We do not claim to know the individual or have access to their inner thoughts and feelings. We do know that life for transgender people is very difficult and made more difficult in the preceding months by a virtual avalanche of anti-trans legislation and public callouts by right-wing personalities and political figures for nothing less than the genocidal eradication of trans people from society. Many transgender people deal with anxiety, depression, thoughts of suicide, and PTSD from the near-constant drumbeat of anti-trans hate, lack of acceptance from family members and certain religious institutions, denial of our existence, and calls for detransition and forced conversion. What is going... What are these people talking about, folks? Like, this is... This... The Trans Resistance Network. This is their official media statement. I mean, I don't even know what is going on here. I mean, is this not sick that these people feel sorry for the shooter? And not only that, but they blame Republicans for it? They they blame the right? I mean, we're dealing with some sick people here, folks. We're dealing with some sick pooches here. I mean, this is crazy. So you're going to blame the right for the shooter murdering six people, six innocent people in a school, including three children. That is disgusting. And like I said, there's something wrong with these people mentally and emotionally. They are broken people. And I fear that in the coming days when we get details about the manifesto, in that manifesto is going to say that she specifically targeted Christians. Yes. This, I feel like, it being a Christian school was connected somehow, some way, in her specific targeting. I don't know that for sure. I can't, I can't possibly know that for sure. But I just find it awfully coincidental that this trans girl would find a Christian school to shoot. And when we find out more about the second target or the initial target, then I think we're really going to know. But when we find more details out, I think it's all going to correlate. It's all going to lead to this trans person, the shooter, specifically targeted that Christian school for a reason, to kill Christians. And ladies and gentlemen, we have seen an uptick in Christians being targeted in the last decade like we've never seen before in history. I would probably say, other than the Jewish community, I would probably say the Christian community is probably the second most targeted religion in the world. I would probably say that. The Christians in this country are targeted so much, and it's so accepted by society, it makes me sick. And if this turns out to be that this shooter specifically went to that Christian school so that she can kill Christians and, and Christian, innocent Christian children, no less, then we got some, we got some bigger issues. And then that makes this comment even sicker than what it is. So from here on out, we're never going to mention this girl's name again. She will not be mentioned on the, on this episode again. We cannot give these people the fame that they seek. This person didn't seem like she was specifically doing it for fame and name net recognition. Well, I don't know, because in the note that she did leave, she did say that you'll understand this one day, or one day this will make sense. I don't know what she meant by that. Nobody really knows what she meant by that, but she said she left plenty of evidence behind, and I'm sure that's exactly what they're working on right now. They're trying to piece all this together and figure out what was the motive that possessed this psychopath to go out and murder three innocent children and three innocent adults at a Christian school. That's what we're going to that's what they're going to have to start piecing together in the coming days. But like I said earlier in the episode, the Democrats wasted no time, no time to make this political. I I don't even know, not even an hour after this happened, you already had news anchors and leftist Democrats 
and Corrine Jean-Pierre come out and make comments about this. It's some of the sickest stuff I've ever seen, and Democrats do this all the time. You want to know why this stuff isn't going to get fixed? You want to know why this stuff isn't going to get resolved? You want to know why we're going to have we're going to keep having mass shootings and all this craziness is going to happen because the Democrats can't be trusted with this. That's why. Nobody can trust the Democrats when it comes to gun reform. That's why. Nobody should trust the Democrats when it comes to gun reform. They cannot be trusted. These people do not stop. When they get something, they keep going. If you give them an inch, they'll take a mile. You give them the bump stock and they want the whole gun. If you give them the magazine, they want the whole gun. If you give them the assault rifle, they want your handguns. If you give them handguns and your assault rifles, they're going to want the shotguns. These people are never going to stop. They do not stop in nothing they do. You've seen this time and time again, from safe, legal, but rare, to now you can have abortions whenever you want, on demand, up until birth. And now, I mean, some even some of these psychos even want after birth. So after the mom gives birth, they want that baby to lay on the table and die. That's what these people think. That's how they think. That's why they are called progressive. They are so progressive. They are regressing our country back decades and decades, back to the Stone Age. These people are sick. And that's why they cannot be trusted to work with gun reform. You cannot work with these people when it comes to gun reform, okay? Because they do not stop. And it's sad to say that because it doesn't, if, if this people, if you do not come up with some kind of remedy to figure out what is going on here, then nothing's going to get done and it's going to happen again. So instead of these stupid people, these stupid leftist Democrats coming out and saying, oh, you should implement those assault weapons ban immediately. No, dummy. That's not what we're talking about. What we need to do is we need to figure out what the problem is so that we can fix it. You can't just do a gun confiscation and get rid of all the guns and you think that's going to work. It's not going to work. So these people need to stop saying it. Just stop saying it. Because every time you come out and say it, you drive people away from the conversation. If we're going to have a conversation, the, the conversation cannot happen with these people. First of all, they don't know what they're talking about. Second of all, they can't be trusted with anything. So if you try and make a deal with them, it's not going to be enough. So they cannot be negotiated with. What needs to happen is we need to figure out what is going on mentally with this situation. And it's a shame. I know a lot of people will probably give me, I'll probably get a lot of flack for this, but they need to stop shooting and killing these shooters because I just feel like they need to bring these shooters in. We, we need to study these people, man. What is going on inside their heads? We need to figure out what is going on with them. I, I know it's not a very popular thing to say, to sit there and say, oh, well, this shooter shouldn't be killed by police. I think this person needs to rot and burn in hell, and they will. But I'm saying before we kill them, we need to study them, dissect their brains and find out what is going on. We need to interview them. We need to ask them questions, interrogate them and figure out exactly what is going on inside their head for them to do this. There has to be some kind of underlying issue that makes these people, that drives these people to just have complete disregard for human life. There has to be something going on in the frontal lobe or something happening in the in the brain that is making these people flip a switch. Because you have millions and millions of guns out there. You have millions of gun owners. They don't go out and kill people with them. I mean, it's just crazy. What makes these people flip the switch and just go kill a bunch of innocent kids? That's what the, we need to figure out. And we can't figure it out if if they keep getting shot and killed. So I, I don't know what we need to do in order to, because it's obviously not popular. You can't have cops going in to a situation that could put them in danger. But I, I know it's not going to be popular to say, but we need to like try and, and keep these people alive and arrest them so that we could study them and then give them, give them the needle, give them lethal injection or firing squad. I know they're bringing firing squad back in a couple states. I read that. That's pretty interesting. But we, how are we going to figure out what these, what's going through these people's minds if we can't interrogate them? We have to be able to interrogate these people. Okay, that's my first, that's kind of my first solution to this, is we need to figure out what is going on with these people mentally, psychologically, and then that would help us determine where we go from there. Second, 
We need to fortify these schools. I don't know how else to say this. I've been saying this from day one. It is stupid to have gun-free zones. I've said this in at least three different episodes when we talk about the ATF and the pistol brace rule. You cannot advertise that you are a soft target. You cannot do that. You know, making schools gun-free zones is not stopping the shootings, folks. I mean, it's not even that hard of a problem. You, by advertising you are a gun-free zone, you are making yourself a soft target for psychopaths. What does advertising that you're a gun-free zone even do? I don't know. It's going to let law-abiding gun owners know that they can't have their gun on the property? Well, sorry, folks. Law-abiding gun owners are responsible gun owners. They already know this. So that that's pointless to have that. It's just pointless. All you're doing is putting a blinking red sign saying, come on in, psycho. Come on in. There's no guns here. It's safe. It's safe. There's a mental aspect to a criminal when he's going to an area that he knows he's going to have easy targets. And you're going to have a lot less, it's going to be a lot less likely for a mass shooter to go into a gun store to go shoot a bunch of people than they are a gun-free school zone. So that's what I'm trying to say. This is not that hard of a problem. So what we need to do is fortify these schools. And all the Democrats can keep saying is they don't want more guns in schools. No, folks, that's not what the, they're not, they're not seeing it right. And that's the problem with these people. They just don't get it. They do not get it. So from here on out, I say we do it our way. For decades, we've been passing laws against law-abiding gun owners every time a psychopath commits an act of evil. So as of now, we have thousands of gun laws on the books, and shootings are still happening. So just like with everything else, they cram down our throats. Democrats never admit their ideas suck. When the police chief was giving his statement, he specifically said that the suspect skipped an initial target because of increased security. How do people not see this? How does a light bulb not go off in their, in their head? The shooter skipped the target because she's seen increased security. So she went where? To a target that didn't have security. This is what I'm trying to say, folks. There should be security, armed security, and fortified at every single school. And if you tell me that it costs too much money and you tell me we can't afford it, then you're going to have to explain why we're sending hundreds of billions over to Ukraine to protect their country. Like I said, we've tried it their way. Their way sucks. The only people going to jail for guns are law-abiding gun owners because the ATF and the, and the Biden administration come out with pistol brace rules in the middle of the night. And then law-abiding gun owners go to jail because they didn't see the rule. We, you know, these rules are constantly changing. The laws are constantly changing. Is it a rule? Is it a law? We don't know. It's very confusing, folks. And leave it up to the government to screw up everything. But the more people, the more people you arm in a school, teachers, resource officers, the better chance you're going to have of a shooter not going there. Why? Because they'll get shot. That's why. People are a lot less likely to go shooting a bunch of people when they know they're going to get shot back. And I don't know what other example you need. This person specifically went to the first target and then left when she seen that it was high security and went to a second target. She went to a softer target where there was no security. There was no armed guards. There was no resource officers. There was nothing. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if they were like the other schools with gun-free zones and had a big white sign that had a handgun on it and a cross, a big red circle and a cross through it, just letting everybody know that there's nobody on that property that has a gun to shoot back. So this has to stop. This is something easy we can do. This is something we can do. Enough of this pass my assault weapons ban. Enough of this crap. Because these people don't get anything done. If you want something done, then you need to start doing simple things first. Arm more people in the schools, period. I don't care what these dumbasses say. They're sitting there saying, oh, but we don't, it's too scary for the kids. No, folks, no. I carry a gun all the time. My kids are not scared of me, okay? My kids have been around guns their whole life, okay? It's not, it does not affect them one bit. 
The resource officers at their school carry guns on them all times, at all times. And my kids never come home and say how scared they are the resource officer has a gun on his hip. Never, not once did that ever happen. So enough of this crap, man. Enough of this. So I have a, I got an audio clip from, this was not that long after the event, after the shooting. This is the comment that uh, Jean-Pierre made about, about the whole situation. We want to express the president's appreciation for the first responders and prayers for all the families affected by this shooting. While we don't know yet all the details in this latest tragic shooting, we know that too often our schools and communities are being devastated by gun violence. Schools should be safe spaces for our kids to grow and learn and for our educators to teach. As you all know, President Biden has taken more action than any president in history on gun safety. From nearly two dozens, two dozen actions, including the executive order he just signed last month, or this, this month, pardon me, to the Bipartisan, Bipartisan Safer Communities Act legislation he signed into law after the tragedies in Uvalde and Buffalo. He also believes it's not enough. We must do more. And he wants Congress to act because enough is enough. In his State of the Union, the president called on Congress to do something to stop the epidemic of gun violence, tearing families apart, tearing communities apart. How many more children have, have to be murdered before Republicans in Congress will step up and act to pass the assault weapons ban? to close loopholes in our background in our in our background check system or to require the safe storage of guns we need to do something once again the president calls on congress to do something before another child is senselessly killed in a preventable act of gun violence again we need to do something that's the problem we have these people have this attitude of just do something just something well, they have been doing something and nothing's working. Nothing they do works because their ideas suck. You can't just do something and expect it to work. You need to figure out what the problem is. I just told you guys two things that you could do that would help these schools out big time. And I don't know how many shootings it would prevent because it, it that first school, it prevented the shooter going to the first target and shooting people there. So there you go. I don't know what el what other proof you need. And you're going to sit there and tell me you don't want to do you don't want to reinforce your schools. You don't want to give you don't want resource officers in your schools with guns because you don't want the kids to feel like they're in like I, I don't get what the thing is. Like what are they saying? Why do they not want resource officers with guns in their schools? I don't understand it. Because guns are scary to the kids? Folks, they are not scary to kids. Okay? They're just not if you get resource officers, if anything, the kids will feel safer with police officers around them, okay? I, I don't know which kids are scared of police officers, but if they are, then that's most likely the parents' fault. But I'm telling you, there's something, there's things that we can do. Barricade all the doors. You need a one-way-in and a one-way-out situation. There should be no side doors, no glass doors. There should be no doors anybody can get in without being passed or without being buzzed in. Okay, that's how my kids' schools are. That's how all schools should be. These are easy things we can do. And if you're if anybody uses the excuse that they can't afford it, well then why don't you start taking some money back you sent over to Ukraine, the hundreds of billions of dollars over there, keeping their country safe. These are things we can do. These are proactive things that can be done. More resource officers and if you try and figure out a way, you, you, most of these people, these resource officers would probably do it for free. Get some veterans that would volunteer their time, that are skilled with weapons, and they are trained already in these situations. Most of them. Most of them already have active combat training. Most of them have seen live combat. Get some of these veterans in these schools. They, I'm sure they will volunteer their time. And if not, then incentivize them with taxes. Give them a tax incentive. I don't know. I mean, surely there's something you can do, or you could just pay them. 
I, I, I don't know, but I'm saying it would be easy. It's an easy thing to do. And obviously it's effective because it was effective for the first school the shooter went to, but decided to move on because it had security. So it, that must mean they had people there with guns or she must have felt afraid. She must have seen something that deterred her from going to that school. Whatever it was that deterred her, which I'm sure we're going to we're going to find out in the coming days. That's what every school should do. But instead, we have these mamby pamby talks with Democrats wanting to do an assault weapons ban like that's going to do anything. Oh, take away the pistol brace. That's that's really going to stop them. No, it's not, folks. These people's ideas suck and we need to stop doing what they want us to do. We've done it their way for how long now? We got 3,000 gun laws on the books, and I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of law-abiding gun owners that are probably sitting in jail right now or paying thousands of millions of dollars in fines because of these rule changes and law changes in the middle of the night for guns that do absolutely nothing for criminals. Why don't gun laws work for criminals, folks? Because criminals don't follow the laws. It's pretty simple. That's why I'm trying to say these are not hard problems to figure out. You have solutions you can do in the meantime. Okay, this is not a binary solution. This isn't a black and white. There's nuances to everything. And Democrats don't see that. The leftists do not see that. They think everything's black and white. There's a yes or no answer for everything. There's not, folks. And if you want these things to stop, you're going to have to be proactive and you're going to have to start doing things. And I'm sorry, but an assault weapons ban is not going to do anything. The only thing it's going to do is strip people's Second Amendment rights away. That's it. People are still going to get them. Criminals are still going to get them. You can print the damn things. You can print everything you need for a gun right on a 3D printer. So there's no getting rid of guns. Okay, they're not going anywhere. So the sooner you realize that, the sooner we can move on to this next solution. And I'm telling you that solution is reinforcing your schools with layouts that have one way in and one way out. Okay, that's how most schools, all schools should have that. No side doors that are propped open. No, put big steel doors, okay, on every single classroom. Do whatever you got to do to conceal each classroom. Compartmentalize each classroom and keep them safe there. You have two layers of defense. You'd have the one way in, one way out, and you would have individual classrooms where the shooter can't get in, maybe with steel doors or solid wood doors, whatever the case is, okay? Also, resource officers. There should be armed officers at every single school. You don't need that many, folks. Two, three officers per school, that's doable. Go around in your community and, and just put out there on a banner or put there online say, accepting applications or accepting volunteers will incentivize you with tax write-offs or whatever you got to do. I guarantee you there's retired military members out there. There's retired veterans that would be more than willing to dedicate their time and training that they've received over the years to protect their community. I absolutely guarantee it. They would not have a problem. A lot of them would probably feel honored to do it, by the way. I know I would. I would have no problem doing it. Or if that doesn't work, go and hire somebody. Hire some police officers. They're, it's not that hard, folks. And obviously we know it works. It's just, it's common sense. These people talk about having common sense gun laws, but they refer some of the stupidest laws we've ever seen in our life. This is dumb. This assault weapons ban is dumb. I, I don't, I don't understand it. The high capacity magazine ban, it's dumb. The bump stock ban that Donald Trump banned when he was in office, one of the dumbest things he did. What did that do? Did that do anything? No, it didn't do anything. All it did was just make a millions of people out there have to throw away all their bump stocks. Or if they kept them, they got they got violated the law and probably got arrested and fined. So it didn't do anything. That's what I'm trying to say. These people's ideas suck. We've been doing it their way for a long time, and it doesn't work. Gun laws are not the answer. There's 3,000 of them already on the books, and they don't work. Enough negotiating with these people. They have no idea what they're talking about. They have no idea what even a gun is. They've never shot one. So why are we going to allow these people to try and ban them? Why are we going to allow these people to control the conversation about how we reform them? 
We shouldn't. Stop listening to these people. They are not serious people. They are in it for politics. They are in it for one reason and one reason only, power. That is how to gain power and how to gain more power. That is it. They are not in this for any serious reason. Yeah, I'm sure they're sad and upset and they want to protect their kids in schools. I get that. But these ideas suck. They obviously do not want to do anything proactively because they're not listening. They're not listening. Every time one of these mass shootings happen, every time one of these school shootings happen, they refer to the same things. Okay, they, they, they have the same talking points. It's the same people. It's the same media outlets reporting on it. They want the same things. And when they get them, they don't work. And then they just incrementalize even more. They nibble and nibble and nibble until you got 15,000 gun laws on the books. No law-abiding gun owner is allowed to have a gun anywhere around them, but yet the criminals will still be out shooting and there will still be schools shootings. That's what's going to happen. There will still be shootings in schools. That's what I'm trying to say, is these people's ideas suck. We have easy solutions we can do now and we should do now, immediately. And if we're sitting there and nobody can sit there and say there's no money when you're sending hundreds of billions of dollars to Ukraine. So that's my answer to that. That's why I wanted to wait a little bit before I talked about it, because this stuff pisses me off, man. Does some of the, the, the when these people come out and first of all, they make it political. It's not political. So stop. And, and of course, these people just can't help themselves. They cannot let a crisis go to waste. So with John Pierre sitting there saying, just do something. Do something. No, that's how that's how you come up with stupid laws. That's how when you're just, oh, well, we did something. You see how she she talked about, oh, Biden has passed some of the most stringent gun laws in any president in history. That's all they want, folks. That's all they care about. They just she just wants to be able to come out on stage and give a talking point to their voters and say, look and how proactive Joe Biden was on gun reform. We, we confiscated all the Republicans guns. Don't you feel better now? That's what these people want, man. They're not serious people when it comes to this. If you want serious gun reform, you're going to have to you're going to have to stop negotiating with leftist Democrats, period, because they just cannot be negotiated with. They're not reasonable and they and they're not rational. OK, so I told you two steps that we can do to kind of get proactive on this. So, yeah, so that, that's why I wanted to wait on that conversation. I'm going to do another episode about the, the January 6th footage that just came out. Every time more footage, more information comes out about this, the more and more it looks like a, it's a um, false flag operation orchestrated by the United States government. And it's not looking good, folks. So that's all I have for today's episode. Sorry, I got all worked up there. That stuff just drives me nuts. I've been saying this stuff for years and, and, and for years, the same stuff happens and the same people come out. With their talking points saying the same stuff and nothing ever gets done. So maybe we should stop doing it their way and start doing it our way. So that's all I got for tonight. I thank you guys for tuning into the show today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And uh, hopefully we can figure out what is going on with this transgender movement. And man, we got we got to get... Hopefully it's nothing that's too crazy. And, and hopefully we get some more details about the shooting and figure out exactly why... What, figure out exactly what the motive was behind this because this is just extremely sad i feel bad for these parents I, I can't imagine what they're going through so everyone just please pray for them and uh and keep them in your prayers tonight and just give them and just wish them well because they they are going to be struggling for the rest of their life i cannot fathom what they're going through so yeah if you guys have any questions you can reach out to me at steven toriello you can reach out to me, Stephen Toriello Show at gmail dot com. Um, you're on Rumble now. You can find all the you can find all the episodes on Rumble. You follow my show there. I have I started my own channel on Rumble. It's the Stephen Toriello Show. I'm on Locals now. That's at Stephen Toriello Show at Locals uh, at Locals dot com. And uh, and yeah, so thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you guys have a good day. You guys have a good week. God bless you. And God bless America. You guys have a good day. Bye-bye.